Hmm. According to this, I'm live, but I appear to be having an issue. An error occurred. <coughs> okay. Let's take a look and see if we can figure out what's going on here. I don't know why the YouTube has to change things. So let's find out what is going on. My channel. All right, let's see if we got a signal. Okay, so I've got an error occurring on that. Hmm. All right, so I've got some buffering going on. So not too awful bad, but that's still kind of stinky, but that's all right. And my microphone is not cooperating, so we're going to try and adjust that. Okay, so let's see if this works. Presume that all is hunky dory in the world and well, and we are going to start this. So, for starters, welcome. I'm Clyde with PT3D, and today I am working on the fan or the blower fan for the K40 laser. Um, not a 3D printing thing, but a laser. It's freaking laser, okay? So, let me get you down to ground level here so you can see what I'd be referring to. All right, so this is what came stock with the K40 laser. This was all neatly packed up in here, and this was all covered with this stuff, and yeah, look at this wiring job, dude. This is uh, not even close to acceptable. I mean, how do you expect that to really work properly? Um, so I don't know if you can actually see that really well. So hopefully you can. If you can't, just let me know, and I'll try to adjust the camera angle. But this is what we're working on. So we're going to break out ye old soldering iron. We're going to plug it in. And that way we can get started on this. Um, my apologies for the video the other day. Um, it was not precisely what I was going for when I did the video when I was doing some little minor major minor major minor minor major upgrades on the CR10S um, I have replaced that with the um, sorry I'm doing cable management so I don't burn myself um, I did the you know what? I can pull up this other camera. Maybe that'll help a little bit. Um, yeah, anyway, I was working on the Micro Swiss hot end, which does work. And I worked on the Bontech extruder Chinese clone. And that also did work. So I'm going to adjust this so you can see me while I work. Because I'm going to be working right here. So you can see my hands. Hello, look at my hands. Hello, Paul. How are you? It is good to have you here, sir. So today we are going to focus on fixing this wiring problem. So we have our solder and we have our little uh, 
baggies of shrink tubing. Uh, we need to get this into a state that I could call acceptable. Um, as you know, uh, I think more often than not, I like to break things more than I like to fix them. So we're going to see just how well this little repair works. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to find an appropriate sized tubing. I'll probably go with the blue this time. And we are going to kind of just carefully see how much room we have. So we have not a whole heck of a lot of room to work with. So what I think I'll do is I'll actually put it on the other side while my iron heats up. And it is actually going well, Paul. The only issue I have was yesterday um, I discovered that my K40 laser tube was, well, not really a functioning laser tube, which stinks. Hello, Mario. How are you, sir? Oh, so, yeah, anyway, that's uh, this is the gist of what I'm working on right now. Uh, we're just going to kind of stiffen this connection up a little bit and try to make it a little safer. Or at least make it last for a little longer. So we're just gonna kind of, I didn't pretend these because, well, I'm lazy. I like to do things minimal. But this will hold the uh, strands together. So that, that was actually what the goal is on this particular mission. So now that right there is already it, 10 times better than what it was when I got it. So I did made the change to the K40 Whisper. Oh, tell me, tell me, what did you do with the K40? Which part? There are several upgrades um, that you can get for the K40 or K40 laser, sorry. Um, I did download the K40 Whisperer software. So that is something that I'm looking forward to using. Um, obviously, I can't use it right now because, well, I don't have a functioning laser, so that is not going to work so well. Hello, Kelly. Yes, it just came in the mail as of yesterday. Um, because it was a tool that I wanted to add to my arsenal. Um, I'm hoping that it'll uh, kind of bring up a little bit more interest um, and allow me to do some uh, fulfilling on the Patreon side because I've been really bad about that. Um, my updating to Patreon is horrible, and I'm apologetic to that. So I apologize to you, Kelly, for that especially. Um, I do appreciate you all the same, and I thank you. Um, so, yeah, I uh, had to make a decision on what exactly I was going to do this year regarding my uh, tool upgrading. Um, I've got five 3D printers, three of which I use regularly. And honestly, I was like, I don't really need another 3D printer right now. I need something else that's going to work. Um, on the side that I haven't been really exposed to yet. So I opted to go with the laser because the price was good and I had a very limited budget this year compared to previous years for my tax returns. So that would have been, and that was my choice. So I chose to invest it in a laser. Well, the laser tube itself, um, which I can show you shortly, um, had a crack in it, which means the CO2 was no longer in the uh, laser tube. And uh, yes, well, actually, that's what I'm working on right now is I'm actually going to fix this blower for right now because I really don't want to have to spend too much more money than I already have on... Uh, other things right now. Um, I still, the honeycomb build plate, I'm still kind of asking around to find out where I can get one of those. 
Um, and at some point, yeah, I would like to upgrade to the uh, the tumbler system. Um, I should probably put that shrink tubing on first. Ha ha. That's why I break things first. Um, yeah, the, the blower I've already got plans on. Um, I'm planning on um, getting an inline thing, but I've got to design the uh, a shroud module to go over the uh, the manifold. So, and I got to cut the manifold back a little bit because, as you know, that manifold wastes a lot of space. And recycle the monitors. Send you another tube, or are you just going to buy a new one? Well, I hope they send me a new one because I can't afford a new one. Okay, because I'm still unemployed as of right now. Um, I really don't have the funds to go and do <laughs> buying a $200 laser tube or however much it costs. I'm just guessing. I was told it was right around $200. Um, since I've only had the thing for a day and it was defective out of the box, I'm going to go with I really hope the seller honors that and uh, takes care of it. Um, they've been very responsive, which I give them credit for. They are in China, so the communications are kind of, it, well, tricky for being in China. Panel of a TV laptop monitor. Um, okay, Mari, you got to explain what on that one. Um, input a ramps on it. Yeah. Well, I've been told, too, to get a, uh, um, what is it, the mamine manometer put on there, which is also something that I will do at some point. Um, I'm grateful that they include the uh, LED system or lights now, which is not, it, that's not something they've always done, because I've looked at older videos, and it was definitely not there before, but, so I am kind of grateful for that that's pretty cool they added that maybe it's because everybody else was doing that upgrade anyway oh my god i wish i had my lighter with me it makes this so much easier but i don't so we're gonna do it this way sorry and i will look at the chat here in just a second all right let's let that cool down for a second and then i got one more to do the glass the panel the panel that makes the light on the monitor Panel that makes the light on the monitor. It's a plastic sheet. <clears throat> um, what for using as a build surface? Or I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be dumb. I'm just trying to. You have to spell it out for me. Ask Kelly; he'll tell you. But yeah, Kelly, hopefully I will find out um, tonight or by tomorrow morning. What, why do they do counterclockwise wraps on these things? Maybe that messes with me. Oh, I'm going to take that off anyway and put the uh, shrink tube on. Oh, um, I've taken monitors apart before. Um, but I don't have any spares running around, so typically that's not something I do. Um, I've never actually fully disassembled the uh, the front of the display. Um, I had thought about doing that at numerous times just because, but I've never really had the opportunity because I haven't had one that's just been completely blown yet. Peeling the LED strip off the monitor using that since... Oh, okay. I gotcha. I gotcha. I gotcha. I gotcha. Nope. I actually did not think of that. You're talking about the backlight L OLED type thing? Or the backlight L LED? LCD? Yeah, I've never, never done that. But like I said, I haven't really had a whole lot of uh, extra monitors laying about, so I could just kind of do that either. I typically use mine till they die. Horrible and catastrophic deaths. It's 
So yeah, um, Kelly, if you have any advice too on the Patreon side, let me know because uh, I, I realize I've been horrible about updating Patreon lately. I've been trying to just get some content and honestly, I'm so boring. I probably shouldn't even have a Patreon. Um, you can send me photos to... Well, you can message me on Twitter or you can email. I think my email address is in here, prototype this 3 d at gmail.com. You can also do that. It's in the description of my uh, channel. Not, not in my uh, description of this uh, video because I'm too lazy to just copy and paste stuff, I guess. But... And that would be the last one. So yeah, I uh, took the advice of many others that have uh, received these fans. Um, and I concur, the wiring was epically horrible. Like, I mean, I don't even know if you could qualify that as wiring. It was like, it was a kit. They uh, sent you a kit for the, uh, the fan or the blower fan. Um, these are not CE certified, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, yeah. But, at this point, it has been fixed. At least sufficiently that I'm not horribly concerned about it, like, just going up in smoke and catching on fire. Which is good. <laughs> I may have to change that, Kelly. Oh my God. Um, is a uh, plate that refracts the LEDs to illuminate and see. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, send me pictures, dude. I'd love to see that. Um, I'm looking for all kinds of things to cut. To be fair, so I'm gonna let my iron cool off for a second. Sorry about the lighting. Um, I have horrible lighting in here. I need to get some boxes mounted so I have good lighting. But I don't have it yet. You know, thank you, by the way, Kelly. I always, I do appreciate you no matter what. I mean, you've, you've literally been here since day one for the most part. Which I don't know if you're just a glutton for punishment or what. Um, I am trying to change my ways a little bit, though. Um, I'm trying to trying to be more interesting. I'm, I'm hoping this laser thing is going to actually fix that a little bit. Because there's so much you can do with the lasers. And I really, really want to just take advantage of that. Um, we have a big uh, crafting market here. Like... Uh, Arts and crafts, and they tend to do a lot of those uh, craft fairs here. So I'm kind of hoping to use the laser because it's definitely more of the um, type of stuff that people around here are looking for, more so than the 3D printed stuff. I mean, if I get the 3D printed stuff clean enough, they would uh, certainly, uh, you know, be on it. But to be fair... 3D printed stuff looks like 3D printed stuff unless you spend ages and ages of, you know, and hours of just cleanup work on those. I mean, there are ways to expedite that process, and I know that, but I'm also still a junior designer, so I have designed several things, though, that have actually worked, so yay me! But, yeah, anyway, so that's beside the point. It's about you, not me. I'm just kidding. It is about me. We're going to try and stuff all this stuff back in here. There we go. So we have now officially put this back. What a weird setup this thing is, too. There we go. A couple of screws. This thing is horribly built, by the way. So, yeah, as uh, Mario was saying, I would definitely recommend uh, upgrading this prior to your if you can afford it if not then just at least fix the wiring and not drop screws on the floor like I just did which I always manage to do anyway so I don't know why I'm surprised 
<sighs> Downside to having... I gotta take my glasses off so I can actually see. I know, ironic, right? You need glasses to see, but I need glasses so I can find things on the floor. Oh no, that thing bounced good. Oh, there it is. Ah, see, I found that. That was almost record time, too. Uh, but yes, based on the quality of this fan, I would say absolutely just replace it. Um, if you can. Um, I think uh, replacement fans, depending on what you get, range from like 20 to like, well, 20 and more. I'm just going to leave it at that. So it's definitely not a cheap upgrade. It is a good upgrade, though, and it would be a preferred upgrade to not doing it. But what I will do now is I'm going to test this, make sure it does work, because I have a surge protector, well, a surge protector, not a GFI. And we are going to plug it in. And it is pushing out some decent air, which is good. So now if you wish to see what I did here, I would be happy to show you. Um, this is the shroud. As you can tell, I'm using the stock um, blue tubing that it came with. Not really great. Um, I have used a hose clamp. Stream is buffering. Are you guys still seeing it? I don't know. I can't tell. <sighs> Let me refresh to make sure. I never, I, it's what I don't like about YouTube is that I can't always tell what's going on. It tells me the health of the stream, but doesn't always uh, do the best job. All right, so I appear to be having a latency issue somewhere. So let me go back to the screen. Huh. I can't tell if I'm still streaming or not. According to this, I am, but according to this, I'm not. Come on. Oh, 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 there we go. All right, it looks like I am still streaming. Holy cow. Where are you going to mount that thing? The end of the tube. Ah, I will. Sorry, and I apologize for the... Uh, the hiccup there. I don't know if you guys lost my stream or not. It's like I said, it's really hard to tell. Um, this is actually this part here. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, let me see if I got to view the camera. So I'm trying to go back and forth because my yeah, my screens are I don't know, whatever. Anyway, this part, which is a dryer duct assembly, typically mounts to the back of a dryer. This does allow me flexibility because it'll extend out to 48 inches, I think. Um, and what I did is, let me try to get this whole thing in the picture so you can actually get the perspective. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Well, anyway. The <laughs> I gotta turn the camera. Ah, that's funny. Okay, so the duct or the fan, this goes on the back of the K40. And then uh, right here, this actually goes in the window that I have. And it fits in beautifully. And then the, uh, which I could turn around and show you since we're gonna go over there anyway. So. Over here, see, this is where you guys are. Look, hi. Um, that window back there, over there, with the red thing on it, 
that is where the duct actually fits in. So, which, as you can see, it basically goes in like this when the laser's mounted properly, which it's not right now. So, and then I can expand it like by like a half inch. And that's just enough to seat it in the metal window frame. And then it uh, does its little thing. All right, so let's move you guys carefully so we don't disconnect anything over here. And then I will show you the, I like the smell of burnt wood, so it most likely wouldn't bother me. Well, it's not just the burnt wood part that I have to be concerned about because uh, this is a, uh, a community space, so there's many people down the hallway that may not appreciate the smell. Um, not to mention that the uh, majority of the stuff I'll be engraving may or may not be wood. So I have a piece of uh, acrylic in there right now, actually, that I was going to cut some keychains on. Because uh, there's lots of requests for stuff. So I got to make sure that it's well ventilated. Right, exactly. So. Whether I'm doing wood, I like the smell of burnt wood, but the thing is, is I don't like the smell of burnt plastic or melting plastic. So that would be where that comes in. So we'll bring you over here. Um, let me extend my legs a little bit here. Find a uh, happy balance here for the legs. Because this is not... Uh, I don't have a real ideal setup for this kind of stuff, unfortunately. All right, let's see. So you can see down on the laser, that's cool. Um, so what we were talking about a little while ago, when I was talking about Tomario, was in here, for starters, if you wanna see it, I can show you this. It's really funny, cause this is just, I mean, I swear, it's just like a 3D printer. And it's off. Um, lasers off. Okay. Turn it down. Okay. So when you turn this on, well, let me get a better viewpoint so you can see this. I'm going to turn you down here. There you go. And when I turn it on, it does a homing sequence just like the 3D printers, which is cool. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this is actually from the, uh, InStone Inventor Pro. I'm actually going to use that as a uh, test piece to cut because I have plenty of this material from when I took apart the uh, printer. So that's going to be fun. We're going to enjoy that. And eh, I got to do something about the noise on my color correction. I don't have enough light up back there. So this is a, a modification that I did. Um, which you can't really see. Actually, I think you can now. Now, well, sort of. Under here is actually the, uh, it's a 3D printed part that this hose fits to. And what it does is it basically blows air on the uh, part. It's an air assist nodule. Don, how are you? And the air assist nodule, or module, just keeps the, uh, the smoke and debris from coming up onto the, la or to the lens or the focusing lens down here. So you don't have to clean it quite as often. So that's what the point is in that. Um, what can I show you? The PSU, um, I have gone through this and uh, verified all the connections look good. Um, I don't know if you can see that from there, not really. But in here, like, there is some stuff, like this is your control board right here. Um, the PSU is right here, which I may or may not take this uh, coating off of. I haven't quite decided yet. I've been told that it, it actually holds some of the heat in, so I may be better off taking it off. Um, the power comes from back here in the back for the mains power to the laser. Um, the rest of this, like I said, this is all 
like the, uh, the stuff that goes up here in the uh, for the controls here. Oh, what are we running on the 3D printer? That is a part to someone's house. They needed a piece to go in their rafters, which is what this is. Um, it's three pieces because it's actually fairly enormous. And uh, what this is going to do is, uh, with the last piece out here, it's going to allow them to put it up into their... Um, ceiling i guess and there's a little bit of a draft there and they got some critters that are climbing into their porch so i am designed that based on their dimensions and 3d printing it so what are we running on the 3d printer so we got that what type of printer is that this is not a printer don this is actually a laser it's a laser cutter so i know a little bit outside of uh, the norm but i have a whole lot of work potential that I can get out of this. So now the uh, this part is what I want to replace. Um, I don't know if that's something. I don't know if Mario's still in here or not. I don't know, but uh, Mario was uh, talking about upgrades that can be done to this machine. It is very difficult for me to do anything with it right now in this orientation because it's facing away from me it's back to right now so i can't check the gantry and stuff but as i'm looking here i can see that some of that the plate like this is a little loose you can there's a little bit of movement in that so i'll probably have to fix that these standoffs that are here um i may actually swap out with thumb screws in the future um because i don't plan on using this build plate forever you can see it i'm getting close to the edge of the camera here but right here this needs to be cut back about an inch to an inch and a half hello mario again so i'm going to cut this uh this is what i was talking about the duct um i gotta cut this back about an inch and a half to two inches to get it out of the way um i gotta find the honeycomb build plate for this so i can get the uh, center right um, they do have adjustable um, beds for these so if you're using a thicker material you can actually lower the bed to keep it at the level you want because these uh, lasers tend to have a focal point and I think it was 58 or so millimeters I think um, so Mario you can probably correct me on that one which is uh, I think I don't know it's like 58 millimeters I think is what I heard so I don't know for sure if that's correct or not. That seems awfully big, though. But anyway, so yeah, um, this, like I said, this tube is a modification. Um, I have a compressor that's over there for airbrushing. So at some point, I'm going to actually either split it with valves or I'm just going to put quick connects on it because I don't want to keep disconnecting the vinyl tubing <coughs> from it because it'll just wear out the tubing. Um, it has a max operating pressure of like 50 PSI anyway, so not a huge deal. Um, but it's plenty to do airbrushing of stuff. I did get a Lazy Susan finally. Um, I'm going to need to rig up a fume extractor eventually in this room. Um, I'm going to run out of room really fast, and I'm also out of money, so I can't do anything right now. But the fume extractor would be nice because then I could have a dual damper system on it that would allow me to basically close off one side so if I'm running the laser or close off the other side if I'm running you know the uh, the paint booth because I want to do a uh, spray booth as well so I do have to upgrade the other stuff surge aluminum honeycomb grid core quarter inch cell 18 by oh well look at you you're so stinking schmott well actually hey you could can you add that to my uh I wonder if you can add that to my wish list. 500 short from getting a new electric scooter so I can be mobile. Sweet, dude. Let's see. Aluminum honeycomb grid core. I'm going to try just that. Oop. Or not. Maybe it won't let me today. Let's, uh, 
move this uh, computer over here. And we'll do this so you can barely see me. Oh, where did I put my spectacles? My spectacles. They're only $27, huh? That's not bad. Um, I can't do it this minute, but I, uh, Mama told me I could go buy the parts necessary to get the laser running because that was the only way to test it and see if it was going to work. So what that entailed was the, the bucket, which is the customary Home Depot bucket. Um, I had a friend give me the water, which is only one of these is actually distilled. So, oopsie. I thought they were all distilled. But the other ones are uh, processed spring water. So hopefully that won't be a deal breaker. Um, I got the parts that you see here, which was the that thingy. Um, I had to get the fittings for the compressor, which you can't see, so I'm not even going to bother. And that's pretty much the extent of that. Um, a lot of it was just, it was like 30 bucks worth of parts. So she's not mad at me, so I didn't spend too much, thankfully. And I'm adjusting my tripod, which is what all this movement around is about. So sorry about that. Because... <laughs> I will let you look at this horrible looking print. Oh God, that's horrible. I gotta stop that. Yeah, that's bad. Well, I don't know. Yeah, that's bad. Let's no, stop it. Stop it. Okay. See this, I'm glad you guys were here because I wasn't paying attention to the printer. Oops. So we're going to have to let this cool off. Yeah, there's a, like a, I think there's something on the build plate here that I have to fix. So it's causing adhesion issues on that. So we will address that later. Oh, actually, I may as well just turn this off because I don't have time to start it back up right now. Well, maybe I do. What time is it? I have to get off here shortly because I have to go retrieve my children off of the public transportation system. So we'll uh, let's clean this bed up a little bit. <clears throat> All right, forgive me for a moment. I have to grab a towel. Because <coughs> unfortunately, I don't think I have any alcohol to use. So you get to go in utility space where I get some water. All right. And we will use a little bit of water to clean this section of the build plate off. And then we'll treat it with a little bit of the sticky glue stuffy, which I don't like to do because honestly, I've never had to do it on this. But when it comes to adhesion, Sometimes you have to go with the flow. So let's find some glue. Uh, we got some glue right here. So, ooh -hoo. I haven't used this stuff in, God, I don't even know when the last time I used this was. But I can use it right here in this spot. And then hopefully that'll fix my little issue. I've tried lifting and micro-stepping that particular section of the build plate. And it has not fixed it. I've done two prints with it. And both prints have kind of been chundered. So I think I need to get some alcohol and resurface it. We have the Blair Witch Project going in the background. You can only see it on the video. Sorry about that. You too, Don. Thanks for stopping in. Um, yes, Blair. Oh, you're talking about that screen in the back. Sorry. Well, the, the whole point on this was that I could actually have something going on in the background. But I don't really have anything to do in the background right now. So I should probably turn it off. Okay, laptop camera, filters, chroma key. There you go. Oh, hold on. 
Hello. Oh, I love you. Thank you. Oh, you're good. I'm just talking to some people. Well, good luck. No, that's fine. Yeah. I didn't unlock it. I just came in with it. Okay. So thank you. I'm honored. Please, you should have had one. So there is one outside, right? Yes, there's two in okay. the box. Yes, and I want to make sure that we can get clean. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'll be going to see you all in the small people. Yeah, I know. So he does get busy like that sometimes. Okay. Thank you, dear. And I'll be running Thank you. All right, so we have a few more minutes of something. I don't know, of anything, really. Um, ah, that does seem to have fixed it. That's much better than it was. Or I don't know if you can see it or not, because my screen's messed up. I'm trying to do too, too many things at once. All right, you can see the screen. All right, so let me fix this. So you can look at the light again. Sorry. Okay, so Kelly, you sent that information. So let me look at that real quick. So aluminum, 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 aluminum honeycomb grid core, quarter inch cell. Okay. Copy. Then we'll go to Amazonian. Amazonian.com for your shopping needs. Yeah, you know, I just found out that they in uh, what is it the in Britain? I think it was in Britain. They uh, copyrighted the police call box, or they uh, did something with it, so that you can't actually reproduce the one that looks similar to the TARDIS without express licensing permission. Did you know that? I didn't know that. That looks, oh yeah, I remember this one. That's the one that has the uh, $11 in shipping on it. And no frame, right? Or does it have a frame? I can't tell. It doesn't look like it has a frame, but that's all right. I believe that would work just fabulous. We cut honeycomb to custom sizes to meet every need. Well, I will add that to my wish list. <coughs> Where's my wish list? I think it was my 3D printer parts one. Yeah, I'll just put it in there. Why not? Yay! Okay, we did it. All right, back to you. <clears throat> yeah, and that's actually why I was uh, I was kind of curious about that. I thought that was pretty cool. Well, I mean, and not cool because, I mean, if it's, like, copyrighted, it's like you can't reproduce something that looks like that without their permission. Or sell it, I should say. You can reproduce it all day long as long as you're not selling it. So it's like the... Uh, <clears throat> what is it, the TARDIS uh, Raspberry Pi case that I printed. Um, so, which I did print because I was planning on using it. And I know it's in orange, but that's because that was the filament I had at the time. Because I don't have a whole heck of a lot of filament at this moment. I got, like, an extra spool down there that hasn't been opened yet. I'd like to get some of the... I'd like to get a spool of this stuff... This is the Pro PLA, which I would like to get a spool of. I gotta now that the uh, CR10S is updated, I will print a Maker Coin out of this or two, and see what my thoughts are on this. So I'm really looking forward to trying this out. But I mean, this stuff is just stiff as hell. So I'd really like to try that. Um, I've also got the TPU in here that I gotta try, which I haven't done yet. I've always got weird little projects going. Design work, challenges, 
everything you can imagine. Just one of those things. And I gotta check my massages. you have five minutes free contact you Sorry, somebody <clears throat> messaging me. And I tried to be as quick on the messaging as possible. Um, I think pretty much everything is complete. I think that was all I had to do was the electrical on this for right now. Um, if you want to see the, the laser tube, um, that's the laser tube from afar. Um, what happened was, <clears throat> if you look in there, you see you can kind of see that purple color in there. I don't know if you can see it well, but in the center of this, there's like a purple color. Um, and that's actually the part where the laser fires through. And then you got the water jacket on the outside that keeps it cool. Um, there's a crack right here, which looks like where the metal was put in place um it looks like there was a some kind of structural complication or some kind of issue there and it caused that to uh fail so i have all this water in this laser and i'm gonna have to remove the laser to put in a new one <clears throat> which there's one bolt here on this bracket holding this bracket down I think there might be one on both sides, but I can't tell. Then there's one here, and then there's these two, like, strap connectors that hold the tube in place. I have all this tape on here, which I have not taken off because it basically ruins the this the stuff. But I'm gonna have to take it off anyway because I'm not gonna be able to remove the laser tube without taking this off. But yeah, so my little fancy little laser triangle just got busted. But yeah, dude, this is a freaking 40 watt laser. So anyway, guys, I'm going to call it. Um, I have to get back to real life again and uh, take care of some uh, some real life issues. And I've got to go get my children. So I want to thank you guys, as always, for hanging out with me while I do weird things or maybe not so weird things. But, I mean, certainly soldering a, uh, a laser is probably not the most interesting of things. Or not the laser, but the duck, the fan. So I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. And I look forward to... I look forward... <laughs> I look forward to having you guys at the next stream. Um, I apologize again for the awkwardness of the CR-10S upgrade build. That is something that <clears throat> we'll revisit at some point and try to get that a little bit nicer. So until then, you guys have a wonderful day, and I will see you on the next video. So have a great day. And uh, yeah, you too, Kelly. Thank you again. And I will see you guys soon. And you can always reach out to me on Twitter and Facebook and um, Patreon and all that stuff. So we'll see you again soon. So have a great day.